All right, let's take a look at uh, question number 13. So in this question, it says which uh, quadratic equation has roots negative 8 and negative 4? All right, so the easiest way to see which of these um, has these roots is to generate the equation uh, of a quadratic that has negative 8 and 4 as roots, okay? So in order to do that, what we're going to do is uh, start with the roots. x equals um, negative 8 and x equals 4. x equals negative 4, set both of them equal to 0, so we add 8 to both sides here. So we have x plus 8 equals 0. And then in this one, we add 4 to both sides, and we have x plus 4 equals 0. Now, the reverse of the of zero product property gives us x plus 8 times x plus 4 equals 0. So it looks as though we are solving a, we're doing the reverse process of solving a quadratic equation. Okay? So what we'll do here, we're going to distribute. So for this out, we have x squared plus 4x plus 8x, first outer inner and then last plus 32 equals 0. And then uh, we'll combine the middle terms. We'll have x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0. All right. So the question is, which of this equation matches with this? We can clearly see that um, uh, option letter E is automatically a match, so that's good. So this is a multiple response question, so there could be more than one correct answer. All right, let's start with option A. Take a look at option A. We have x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equal to negative 7x minus 34. So we want to put this in standard form, okay? So to accomplish that, we'll just simply um, add 7x to both sides and also uh, add 34 to both sides. So our final answer, uh, when we combine um, these terms, is going to be x squared plus 12x, then you subtract these two plus 32 equals 0. All right, so that's the answer we have. And we can see that this clearly matches with uh, the original equation. So option letter A is a match. All right, so since the equation is matched, that means these will also be the roots of this, okay? Now let's take a look at um, option B. Option B, we have x squared plus 5x equals 7x plus 32. So what do we do here? We place this in standard form just like this and see if we have a match, all right? So to do that, uh, we'll subtract 7x from both sides and uh, subtract 32 also. So subtract 7x and subtract 32. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. On the left side, we're going to have x squared. Combine 5x minus 7x would give us negative 2x. And then uh, minus 32 is a constant, so we can combine it here. So we'll put it on the side, minus 32. On the right side, equals 0. Does this match with that? Absolutely not. So question B, uh, equation B does not have the roots of negative 4 and negative 8. Now let's shift our attention to uh, option letter C. Option letter C is already in standard form. Let's go ahead and write it down again. We have x squared, so this is option C, we have x squared minus 12x plus 32 equals 0. Does this match with this? Absolutely not, because the 12 is negative and here is positive. Let's shift our attention to option D. We have x squared plus 32 equals 12x. What we're going to do is uh, put this in standard form. So to accomplish that, we'll just subtract 12x from both sides. And then when we subtract 12x from the left side of our equation, we're going to have um, x squared. We can combine these two since they're on like terms. x squared minus 12x plus 32 equals 0. Does this match with this equation? Absolutely not. So this does not have the um, 
roots of negative 8 and negative 4. Option E, we already talked about that before, that option E is a match. x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0 is a match, so let's get now let's shift our attention and focus on option letter F. So option letter F, we have 1 plus 32 over x squared equals negative 12 over x. Now first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides of our equation by x, x squared. The reason we're multiplying by x squared is because that's the LCD of the of the two denominators that are here. Okay, so if you multiply by the LCD, you always eliminate the denominator. All right, so if we multiply by the LCD, we have x squared plus 32x squared over x squared equals negative 12x squared over x. So if we reduce this, we'll have x squared plus 32 equals, because this x squared is divided out, we cancel out, x squared goes here 1, x squared goes here 1, and then x goes into x squared x times, so on the left side we have minus 12x. Now what we'll do next is uh, basically subtract, add 12x to both sides, so that um, it's going to be in standard form, so add 12x, and then add 12x, and then our final answer is going to be x squared plus 12x, plus 32 equals 0. Now does this match this equation? The answer is yes, so option F is also a match. Alright, so our answers for this question, the equations with roots of negative 8 and negative 4 are A, E, and F. Alright, A, E, F are our solutions here. All right, let's take a look at uh, question 14. We're to select three rational expressions that are equal to one another. All right, so let's inspect all of this right here. Um, if you notice, some um, quadratic expressions repeat themselves. For example, x squared minus 11x plus, tw plus 24 repeats itself once, twice, twice, four times. And then we also have x squared minus 7x, x squared... Yeah, that's the main one that repeats itself. Oh yeah, also x squared plus x minus 5x repeats itself. So let's go ahead and factor the trinomials, okay? So starting with option A, um, let's start with option A. For option A, we have x minus 4 divided by x minus 8 minus 12 over x squared minus 11x plus 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this so that we can find the LCD of these two denominators, all right? So let's go ahead and factor that. So we're going to factor factor um, x squared minus 11x plus 24. All right, so we're going to make up the x, make, use the x game to factor this. AC is uh, 24. And B is negative 11. So that in a so what two numbers work here? Um, negative 8 and negative 3. Multiply to give you 25 and out to give negative 11. So we have x squared minus 8x minus 3x plus 24. And then we divide up the center, and we're going to factor by grouping. Okay. So um, let's see what we can do here. So we have x times x minus 2 times 2 times 2 times x minus 3 times x plus 24 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. All right, so from the first two, I can take out uh, x. So I'm left with x minus 8. And then here I can take out negative 3. And I'm left with x minus 8 also. All right, so the factored form is x minus 3 times x minus 8. Okay, so let's put that back into the equation. We're going to have um, x minus 4 over x minus 8 minus 12 over x minus 3 times x minus 8. Now, how do we find the LCD? This has an x minus 8 that has an x minus 8, so that's good. 
this has an x minus 3, this doesn't, so we have to insert an x minus 3 here on the bottom and the top. All right, and then uh, we can combine the two fractions. We combine in this first term here, we're going to foil it out. So we will have, um, in the page, we're going to have x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 12 minus this 12 over the denominator, which is um, x minus 3 x minus 8, x minus 3 times x minus 8. And then when you simplify this, you notice that these two add up to 0. And then our final answer is going to be equal to x squared minus 7x divided by x minus 3 times x minus 8. Okay? So that goes our first answer. All right, let's shift attention to uh, the B. So for the B, we have, um, what do we have? We have x squared minus 7x divided by x squared minus 11x plus 24. So um, let's go ahead and factor the denominator. Oh, wait a minute, we have already factored x squared minus 11, x plus 24 in question A. We know it's x minus 3 times x minus 8. So this is equal to x squared minus 7x over x minus 3 times x minus 8. Okay, so that goes the answer for that. And then for option letter C, For C, we have x over x squared minus 64 times x squared plus x minus 56 over x minus 3. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, factor the denominator, this numerator here, the right numerator. Um, well, before we do that, we can let's factor this one here. So we have x divided by, to factor x squared minus 64. You square root the first and the last and add and subtract. So we have x minus 8 times x plus 8. All right. Let me partition my workspace so you can see. You don't get confused. And then on the right side, times. Now let's go ahead and factor this right numerator here. So let's do that on the upper right corner. We have x squared plus x minus 56. Use the x game to factor this out. So AC is um, negative 56, and B is 1. 8 and negative 7 works here. So let's factor this. So we're, gonna, we're going to have x squared plus 8x minus 7x minus 56. We're going to factor by grouping here. So we'll have. Um, we have here we have from these two we can take out an x so we have x times x plus 8 and then take out a negative 7 here times x plus 8 so we have x plus 8 times x minus 7 all right so that's the factored form let's put it here x plus 8 times x minus 7 and then this divided by x minus 3 Okay, so what do we have in this situation? You see that um, the x plus 8 cancel out, and we're left with um, we multiply the numerator. We have x squared minus 7x divided by x minus 8 times x minus 3. All right, so that goes another solution that we have. And if you notice, B, C, and A are all identical, okay? So the question was, which rational expression are equal to one another? All right, let's shift our attention to um, option letter D. So option D, we have um, x squared 
minus 7x minus 24 over x squared minus 11x plus 24. We already know the factored form of the denominator, right? Because we factored it in number in letter A. It's um, x minus 3 times x minus 8. Now let's factor the numerator. Okay, so we want to factor x squared minus 7x minus 24. So you make your x game. So we have AC is negative 24. MB is negative 7. And what works here? So let's, let's list all the factors of uh, 24. So we have, um, what do we have for 24? 1 times 24. 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4, let's write about 4 times 6. Okay? So which of these pairs will yield um, 7 upon combination? Let's write this again. So 3 times 4, uh, 3 times 8, and then 4 times 6. We have a complete list. Okay, so none of these pairs will give us uh, Seven. So that means this is prime. All right. So for option D, we have the simplified form is x squared minus seven x minus twenty four divided by. If we factor that, it's going to be x minus three times x minus eight. We already found that out. X minus three, x minus eight. Uh, so does this match with the other ones? The answer is no. So this is not this is not a match. Okay. It's not the same as the others. All right, let's take a look at um, option option E. So for option E, we have um, what do we have for option E. We have a division problem for option E. We are to divide um, x over x squared minus 64. That divided by um, x squared plus x minus 56 over x minus 3. Okay, so to divide, you're going to multiply the top, the first one by the reciprocal of the second. So this is going to be x over, if we factor the denominator, we'll have x plus 8, x minus 8. Division becomes a times, times, reciprocate this, you have x minus 3 over. If we factor this, we already know what the factored form is. Let's see, what was it? Um, we did that in part C. It's x plus 8 times uh, x minus 7. So it's x plus 8 times x minus 7. <coughs> All right. And let's see, do we have anything canceling out here for option letter E? The answer is no, so our answer is going to be, for E, is going to be x times x, oh, let's just expand it. Um, when we expand it, we're going to have x squared minus 3x divided by, divided by um, x minus, x plus 8 squared times x minus 8 times x minus 7. And this doesn't match the other two, so this is not an answer also. All right, lastly, let's take a look at option F. For option F, we have, uh, let's see, for option F, we have a an addition problem. So we're supposed to do x minus 4 over x minus 8 plus 12 divided by x squared minus 11x plus 24. All right, so we're going to have x minus 4 over x minus 8. So we need to factor this. We have already factored um, this one earlier in um, problem number and letter uh, D. We factored that. So let's go back and see what it was factored into. That's the denominator here. Also, we also did it in B. It's factors into x minus 3 and x minus 8. We also did it in A, x minus 3, x minus 8. All right, so let's put it in. <laughs> We're going to have 
x minus 3 times x minus a, or x minus a times x minus 3, same thing. So multiply this side by what's missing here, which is x minus 3, x minus 3, x minus 3. When we expand it, this becomes, <coughs> for the left side here, we're going to have x squared minus 4x minus 3x plus 12 plus 12. Um, <clears throat> divided by x minus 3 times x minus 8. So x minus 3 times x minus 8. And then when we simplify this whole thing, we'll have x squared minus 7x plus 24 over x minus 3 times x minus 8. Now, um, does this match with the other ones we have? The answer is no. So the ones that are equal to one another are options A, <coughs> options C, and option B. Those are the ones that are identical. Option D isn't the same as the rest, so that's this is why we have a cross right here. It's not the same. And then um, option E, is this form is not the same as the other, so that doesn't match, and neither does option F. So the only answers that are correct are option A, B. Hey there students, uh, welcome to part two of the review series. Um, we're going to be focusing on right triangle trig and the Pythagorean theorem in this uh, set of problems, okay? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number four. Uh, it says a new pipeline is being constructed to reroute uh, to route uh, oil flow around the exterior of the National Wildlife Preserve. The plan shown, I mean, the plan showing the old pipeline and the new uh, route is shown below. About how many extra miles will the oil flow once the new route is established? So, um, this is the curve, this is the reserve right here, the preserve, sorry, this is the preserve right here. Uh, so, we, we, it's, we have a rerouting taking place. So, this is a new route. And this is the old route. The new route is a little bit longer. So the question is, after this new route is completed, how much, how many extra miles will uh, will the oil flow? Okay. So in order to determine what, how much longer the new pipeline is, we need to figure out the length of the old pipeline. Okay. So we know that the new pipeline is uh, twenty-eight plus 21 miles long. You go starting from here, 21 plus 28. So the oil is going to flow 49 miles. For the old pipeline, we don't know what it is, but since this is a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to simply figure out what the length of the old pipeline is, okay? So um, how about we just make a sketch of the triangle, and then we're going to put in the measures and figure out the length of the uh, old pipeline, okay? So there goes a, a right triangle right there. Um, this is a right triangle with a 90 degree angle. So opposite the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna call this C, and then call this uh, A, which is 28, and then let's call this B. Now whenever you're using Pythagorean theorem, the legs you do not matter how you label, it doesn't matter how you label the legs, um, but the hypotenuse is always C, so you gotta keep that in, in mind. All right, so C is actually the length of the old pipeline. So to figure that out, let's write down the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So we have uh, C squared equals 28 squared plus 21 squared. So we have C squared equals, let's put, uh, plug that into our calculators uh, and see what we get. So let's see, uh, 28 squared plus 21 squared is 1225. Okay, so C square is 1225. So to get C, all we'll just simply do is we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we'll take the square root of that and the square root of that. And we have C equals, well, let's see, what is the square root of 1225? So square root, of, I'm going to insert the answer using second function negative, 35. Okay, so C is 35. All right, so 
So all pipeline is 35 miles long. All right. So we're going to be careful with what the question asks us. It says, how many extra miles will the oil flow in the new one? So uh, the extra miles is simply the difference. Okay, so extra mile traveled, extra miles traveled, is basically the new minus the old, right? So the new is, what was the new again? 49. 49 minus the old, which is 35. So 49 minus 35 is 14 miles. So our correct answer is option A, okay? All right, let's move on to the next question. Uh, question five, it says, um, what is the approximate height in feet of the tree in the figure below? So we have a right triangle situation here also. Uh, but we're given an angle, so let's, let's come to the right triangle. We can use uh, right triangle trigonometry, all right? So what am I talking about? I am talking about so ka -toa. Okay, that's right triangle trick. All right, so what do we have here? We want to focus on what we need and what we know, and then that will help us determine the right ratio to use, give it sine, cosine, or tangent, okay? So let's see. Um, we're looking for the height of the tree. Let's call that x, and then we know what this is. So the angle that we're given, this is the angle that we're given right here, uh, 54 degrees. If this is a reference angle, that means the side opposite the angle is going to be called your opposite. Okay, for O. And this side opposite the 90 degrees is your hypotenuse. Now, this is the adjacent. In this problem, we don't know the adjacent, we don't need it, so we just graph it. Please, no row here. So, we just want to focus on opposite, what we need, and the hypotenuse, which we know. So, our trig ratio has O and H in it. It's obviously sine, right? So, sine is a trig ratio that we're going to use to solve this problem. All right, so sine 54 equals opposite of the hypotenuse, all right? So to isolate x, we multiply both sides by 88. So the height of the tree x is going to be 88 sine 54. So let's plug that into our calculator and see what we get. 88 uh, sine 54. And the answer is 71.2 to two decimal places. So it's approximately uh, 71.2 feet. So the correct answer is option A. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and uh, move on to question number six. It says the right triangle's hypotenuse has length uh, 20. If one leg has length 10, what is the length of the other leg? Okay. So remember the legs are A and B, and the hypotenuse is always C. Okay. So we know that A, we can call A 10, and we can call B, question mark, as indicating that we do not know, and C equals 20. All right, we can use the Pythagorean theorem here because we deal with a right triangle, okay? So the right triangle the relationship between the lengths are the hypotenuse square equals the sum of the squares of the legs, A squared plus B squared, okay? Now let's populate this equation with the, uh, what we know and what we need. So we have 20 squared equals 10 square plus b square. 20 square is 400, and uh, 10 square is 100 plus b square. Okay? Now we'll subtract uh, 100 from both sides. Subtract 100, subtract 100. Using the reflexive property of equality, we're gonna, we can rewrite this as b square equals 400 minus 100 is uh, 300. Okay? Now to get b by itself, you just simply take the square root of both sides. And then we'll have b equals the square root of 300. So the answer for number 6 is option A. All right, let's move on to the next question. Uh, question 7. It says, to find out how to, the height of a tower, a surveyor positions a small transit that is 2 meters tall at a spot 85 meters from the base of a tower. She measures the angle of elevation to the top of the tower to be 29 degrees. What is the height of the tower to the nearest meter? Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and make a sketch of the situation. So we have a transit positioned uh, 85 meters from the base of a tower. So let's say uh, this is a tower right here. So we have the transit is 85 meters away from the base of the tower. 85. 
the transit is not on the ground. The transit has a height of two meters. Okay, so the height of the transit from the ground is two meters. All right, so this is the ground right here. All right, so we can even put the legs of the transit. Uh, well, let me not get you confused. So let's just, let's just do it like this. So and there goes the transit right there. And then we have the, uh, the lady standing right here and she's looking into the transit. Obviously she wants to have it at eye, eye, eyesight. So that's why um, she's, uh, it has a two, two meters off the ground. Okay, so the height of the transit is two meters. This is two. So that means this is two also. Uh, and the angle of elevation to the top of the tower of the transit is uh, 29 degrees. So this is 29 degrees elevation from the line of sight or the horizontal. So um, let's label that. This is 29 degrees. So the question said, what is the height of the tower? So the height of the tower, we're going to find this length right here. And then we're going to add it to the height of the transit, and that will, that will give us the height of the tower. Okay, so we want to find this, that length, whatever that is, plus the height of the transit, that will give us the uh, height of the tower. Okay, so let's call this uh, X. All right, so we have a right triangle trig scenario here because we have two sides and an angle being involved. So what trig ratio are we going to use in Sokatoa? Is it sine, cosine, or tangent? All right, let's look at what we need and what we all right, so um, this is the reference angle, so that means the side opposite it, this height right here, is going to be the opposite, which is the side we uh, need. And this side right here is the adjacent, which is the side we know. The hypotenuse opposite the 90 degrees, we don't need it, we don't know it, so forget about it, all right? So which trig ratio has O and A? Which trig ratio relates the opposite and the adjacent? It is a tangent function, right? So we're going to be using tan to solve the situation, okay? So we're going to have tan, tan of the angle, 29, equals opposite, which is x over adjacent. Remember, x is not the height of the tower. The height of the tower uh, is, uh, let's, let me show it to you, is x plus 2. It's the, that x plus the height of the transit, okay? So let's, we have to be really careful about that. So... The height of the tower is going to be x plus 2. All right, so let's go ahead and find out what uh, x is, and then we'll add 2 to figure out the final answer. So to get uh, x by itself, we multiply both sides by 85, and then we're going to plug that into our calculator. All right, so we're going to do uh, 85 tan, 32, tan 29. That will be the, the measure of x, so 85 tan 29. And then we get 47. It's basically 47 meters to uh, to the nearest integer, okay? So let's go ahead and write that down. X is 47 meters. So is that a correct answer? Is the answer option D? Absolutely not. Remember, we need to add the height of the transit, okay, to X to get the height of the tower. Okay, so the height of the tower, height of tower, is basically uh, 47 plus... Uh, the height of the transit, which is 2, so our final result will be 49. So the answer to this is option A. All right? So there you have it. All right, moving along to the next question, question A. Uh, it says, the picture frame below is a rectangle for dimension 16 inches by 7 inches. What is the length of the diagonal of the picture frame? Okay, so let's see. If we draw a diagonal, what do we have? If we draw a diagonal uh, for the... Um, picture or tangle picture frame in this orientation you notice we have a right triangle so we can uh, basically use uh, the Pythagorean theorem here because we're given two sides and we want to find the third side okay so um, what we're going to do I'm going to extract this triangle and then we're going to use a uh, Pythagorean theorem to figure out the side of the length of the diagonal okay that length right there is the diagonal so let's go ahead and extract it out um, so let's see we have some measures that we know the one on the bottom is 16 the horizontal length and then the vertical length is seven inches and this is diagonal right here called uh let's call it c okay why am i calling it c well it happens to be the side that's opposite the hypotenuse it doesn't matter what you call it though so 
is opposite the 90 degree angle. So this is the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse using uh, the naming system of the Pythagorean theorem is always C. Okay, so I'm going to call this A or N, B. Remember the legs, the labeling of the legs are interchangeable. I can call this A and B and I'll still be correct. Okay, so C is the diagonal. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And then we're going to have uh, C squared equals 7 squared plus 16 squared. All right, let's plug that into our calculator and see what we get. Okay, so we have 7 uh, square plus 16 square. It's just 305. So C square is 305. Let's write that down. C square is 305. So C is going to be the square root of both sides. So let's read both sides. So C is root 305. Okay, so C equals root 305, and that's the uh, length of the diagonal. And the answer is option C. All right, moving along to the next question. Question nine. It says, uh, triangle JKL is shown below. Which, are, which equation should be used to find the length of JK? Okay, so let's see. We're looking for the length of JK. So let's, how about we call that X? This is the segment that we're looking for. All right, so now let's label. This is a right triangle. We don't have an angle, so we can use right triangle trig uh, here. So Katoa. So Katoa. So let's see which one can we use. So let's see. We're going to label what we need and what we know, and then that should help us determine the right ratio to use, the right function to use. Since this is the angle under consideration, the side opposite that angle is going to be your opposite. Okay? And then this side right here is opposite the 90 degree angle. The longest side of the triangle is your hypotenuse. So which trig ratio relates O and H? It's sine, right? So we're going to go sine of the angle, sine 33, equals opposite of a hypotenuse. All right? So you get X by itself, we'll multiply both sides by 34. 34, 34, and then we have X equals 34 sine 33. Let's plug it into our calculators. 34 sine 33. Final answer is, uh, well actually, we don't actually have to solve it. We're just supposed to just set it up, right? I'm going to do an extra here. So let's see, just, if we just want to focus on the setup, uh, there goes the setup right there. Sine 33 equals X over 34. X is JK, right? So let's go ahead and make use of that. Uh, erase the other stuff, they're not necessary. All right, so take that out, take that out. So we have, uh, the answer is going to be sine 33 equals X is JK over 34, okay? Sine 33 equals JK over 34. Final answer is option D, all right? Okay. Now the last question, question 10, it says, what is the approximate value of X in the tri triangle show? So this is a right triangle trig problem again, because we have two sides and an angle. So let's see, um, this is the angle under consideration. So the question is, in Sokatoa, to find um, that angle of measure, are we going to be using sine, cosine, or tangent? So this is the angle, so that means the side opposite the angle, that's going to be the opposite. And the other side we know, is opposite the 90 degrees, which automatically makes it a hypotenuse. All right, so which trig ratio relates O and H, opposite on hypotenuse? It's sine, right? So we have sine X equals the opposite, which is 13, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. So isolate X, X, we're going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So the inverse sine of sine X equals the inverse sine of 13 over 15. Okay. All right. So this cancels out. So we have x equals the inverse sine of 13 over 15. Let's plug that into a calculator and see what we get. Second function sine gives us the inverse sine of 13 divided by 15. Answer is uh, 60.073 to the nearest uh, decimal place. Uh, the tenth place is 60.1. Okay, so X is going to be 60. Hey there, students. So on this group, we're going to be going over uh, some examples and how to evaluate functions and also how to compose functions, all right? So let's go ahead and write down the uh, instruction for, for the notes. Um, so for 
or f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 and g of x equals 2x plus 2. Find for the a part, we're going to find um, f of 1 minus g of 2. Okay? And then for the b part, we're going to find um, 2f of 1, I mean f of negative 1 plus f of negative 1 times g of 3. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and find the first piece, um, f of 1. How do we find f of 1? Um, to find f of 1, we just need to plug in 1 into f of x. Okay, so let's rewrite f of x. f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So f of 1 is going to be what you get when you plug in 1 into all the x's. Okay, so all the x's here are going to substitute 1. So then it puts 2 parentheses square plus 3 parentheses minus 1. Okay. So what am I trying to do now? I'm trying to put in the input. The new input is 1. So that's, that goes into the places of all the x's. So 1, 1. All right? So this polynomial is now uh, an arithmetic expression that I can evaluate using the order of operations. Okay? So we'll do the exponents first. 2, 1 squared is just 1. So 3 times 1 is 3 minus 1. It will simplify further. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 minus 1. 2 plus 3 is 5, so in this case, we're going to have uh, 5 minus 1. What is 5 minus 1? 5 minus 1 is uh, 4. Okay? So that is f of 1. So f of 1 is 4. Now, what is, um, so let's write it down here. f of 1 equals 4. And now, I want to look for g of 2. So to write out, find out what g of 2 is, let's write out what g of x is. All right? The original function is 2x plus 2. So g of 2 is basically what you get when you plug in 2 for all the x's. Okay, g of 2. And on the right side, I'm going to write 2 parentheses plus 2. All right? So what am I getting ready to do here? I'm getting ready to plug in 2 into the x. There's only one spot for the x, so I just put 1, 2 here. Okay? Now, we now have an arithmetic expression. Let's evaluate that. On the right side, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay? So g of 2 is 6. Now that we have f of 1 and g of 2, we can now compute the original, what the original question asked us to do. So it's f of 1 minus g of 2. So f of 1 minus g of 2 um, equals uh, 4, because f of 1 is 4, minus 2, minus 6, because g of 2 is 6. Okay, so 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and there goes your final result. All right. Okay. Now let's shift our attention to the problem on the right. Um, we have to find uh, 2 f of negative 1 plus f of negative 1 times g of 3. So the first thing we're going to look for is f of negative 1. So to find f of negative 1, let's recall what f of x is again. Okay. So f of x is 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. So now I want to evaluate f of what? f of negative 1. What does that mean? I'm plugging in negative 1 for all my x's, okay? So we're going to have 2 times negative 1. Oh, wait, let me set, let me get it uh, set up first to uh, get the input value. So 2 times parentheses square plus 3 times parentheses minus 1, okay? So in all those parentheses, I'm going to put negative 1 and negative 1, all right? Well, let's go ahead and simplify. Negative 1 square, so negative 1 times negative 1, which is just 1. And then if I do 3 times um, negative 1, I'm going to end up with uh, negative 3 minus 1. All right, simplifying further, 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 3 minus 1, okay? 2 minus 3 is uh, negative 1. So minus 1 minus 1 equals negative 2. So this is f of negative 1. So f of negative 1. It's simply negative 2, all right? So anyway, we see negative 1, we're going to plug in. We're going to replace it with negative 2, okay? All right, let's go ahead and um, find the next uh, component, which is g of 3. So to compute g of 3, let's write down what the original parent function is. So the original function is 2x plus 2, okay? So now we're going to look for g of 3, 
Okay, so what on earth is that? Does that mean? What does g of three mean? Well, let's get this prepped first. Well, g of three basically means that wherever I have x in g of x, you substitute it with the new input, which is three. So put a three here. So we'll work it out. So we're going to have two times three is in the order of operations. Two times three is six. Six plus two equals eight. Okay. Now let's find the original. What the original question asks us to find, which is two times f of negative one plus f of negative one times g of three. Okay. So to find that, all we just simply do is we take the value of f of negative one. When you highlight them, we're going to take this value right here, this value, and this value, and we're going to put them in the respective spots. Okay. So f of negative one is negative two, so I'm going to have two times uh, negative two, because negative two is the value of, um, of f of negative one, um, plus another f of negative one, f of negative one is negative two, f of negative one shows up twice, and then g of three is simply eight, okay, so g of three is eight, okay? So uh, that's what we're going to use. Now let's simplify this using the order of operations. Two times negative two is negative four. And then negative two times negative eight is negative 16. And you combine these two, you get negative 20. And there goes your final answer, okay? All right, so this is a, these two examples are in evaluation functions. Now let's go ahead and shift our attention to the whole idea of composition, okay? Composition. Uh, a function. All right, so let's write down the examples for these ones. Write a function. So for this one, you know, underline it first. All right, so instructions are as follows for. Um, f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. g of x equals 2x plus 1. And h of x equals x squared plus 2x. Find um, f of g of x and h of g of x, okay? Well, this is the first part, f of g of x. So how do we find f of g of x? Well, if you take a look at this, you notice that this, this function on the outside that comes first is the parent function, and g is the input function. So we're plugging in um, g into all the x's in f. So whenever I have x in f, you're going to plug g into that, all right? So how do we set it up so we don't get confused what we do? is we, first of all, write down the parent function f of x, which is 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Now we're going to get this function prepped uh, for an input, OK? Um, so how do you get it prepped? You clear out all the x's. The name of the generate f of parentheses equals 2 parentheses squared plus 3 parentheses plus 1. OK, what did I just do? All the x spots here, all the x's, I clear them out and replace them with parentheses. Okay. Now the name of the input function goes on the left and the value goes on the right. Okay. So what is the input function? Let's write it on the side here. The g of x, which is 2x plus 1. Okay. So the name is g of x and the value is 2x plus 1 that goes on the right side. So you have 2x plus 1 and then 2x plus 1. All right. Let's simplify this. Now we're going to simplify this using the rules of algebra, uh, simplifying the algebraic expression. So to simplify this, we're going to write 2 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. It's written twice because of the square. What square mean? It means you multiply something by itself. On this side, we're going to distribute the 3. So that's going to give us 6x plus 3 plus 1. Okay. Now this for this two quantities here, we're going to expand it by doing the first outer in our last, just pull it out. Just keep the two first because we get to do the exponent first by foiling before we multiply by two. Okay, so we pull this out, we're going to have 4x squared plus 2x 
plus 2x plus 1 plus 6x, and then we can combine these two, 3 plus 1 and 4. Okay? Now let's simplify this quantity in parentheses before we distribute, or you could distribute, it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's simplify first. We're going to have 2 times 4x squared, 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 plus 6x plus 4. And then when you distribute 2 to all these three terms, uh, we're going to have, uh oh, we're going to have, um, <clears throat> we're going to have 8x squared plus 8x plus 2 plus 6x plus 4. Okay, now let's combine like terms. We have 8x squared it's by its own, is the only second degree term that we have there. We have two first degree terms namely 8x and 6x. If I combine 8x and 6x together, I'll have 14x, okay? And next thing I can combine is 2 and 4, get the zero degree terms, 2 plus 4 is 6. Guess what? This is f composed with g of x, okay? So that goes your first answer. Let's go ahead and box that. All right, now let's do the second part. We're asked to find um, h of g of x. Okay, so let's write that down, h of g of x. So let's take a look at this, which is the parent and which is the input. If you notice that h is on the outside, g is on the inside, h comes first. This comes next, so this is the parent and now the input. So what this um, uh, command is telling us to execute, so what this operation is asking us to do is to plug g into h. Okay, anyway, you have x. In H, you plug in the value of G of X, all right? So let's refresh our memory by writing down what the parent is, identifying the parent, which is H of X, which equals um, X squared plus 2X, all right? So we're going to write H parenthesis equals parenthesis square with two parentheses. Now something is about to happen to H of X. Why did I tell us all the x's from h of x? Well, because it's about to get an input function, namely g of x. So let's identify the input function before we make the substitution. g of x is 2x plus 1. Now the, the name of the input goes on the left side, and the value goes on the right side. 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. Okay? Now let's go ahead and simplify the right side using the properties of algebra. So uh, we can this square means that 2x will be multiplied by itself, 2x and 2x plus 1. And on the right side here, you distribute the 2 to, the, to these two terms. We have 4x plus 2. Now, let's pull this out. Um, we're going to do the first outer. We'll do that again. So I write this. First, outer, inner, last. Okay? All right, so let's do it. So we're going to have uh, 4x squared plus 2x, first outer, inner, 2x plus 1. We already did it up here. I'm just doing it again for extra practice. Um, plus 4x plus 2. Let's simplify this completely first before I drop the parentheses, okay? So that's going to become 4x squared. If I combine the two middle terms, plus 4x plus 1 plus 4x. Plus two. Okay? So now let's go ahead and combine like terms. Um, so we're going to have the only second degree term is 4x squared. So let's bring it down. As for first degree terms, we have 4x and 4x. So we can combine these two to give us uh, plus 8x. And then the zero degree terms are 1 and 2, the constants. 1 plus 2 is 3. So there goes your h of g of x, okay? So there, there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking up here um, so you can get updates and other cool videos such as this. You can also sub, uh, share this video with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. More videos can be found on myGetShare.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.